Hi everyone, welcome to our video on electrical safety. In this video, we will delve into the principle of electricity and the potential hazards and risks associated with its use. We will explore effective control measures and provide tips to help you protect yourself and others from electrical hazards. What is electricity? Electricity is the flow of electrons through a conductor. Let us understand the principle of electricity. Electricity is the flow of electrons through a conductor like copper wire in a circuit. A circuit is formed by connecting a battery and a light bulb together. Electricity flows in one direction, from the battery to the bulb, causing the filament in the bulb to heat up and emit light. If the circuit is broken by disconnecting the wire, the flow stops and the bulb goes out. Let us understand the basic parameter of an electrical system such as the circuit. Voltage, a measure of the potential difference or electrical driving force pressure that is forcing electricity through the conductor. Unit is volt and symbol is V. Current. Current is a measure of the rate of flow of electricity through the conductor. Unit is ampere or amp and symbol is I. Resistance. Resistance is a measure of how much a component in the circuit resists the passage of electricity. Unit is ohm and symbol is R. These three parameters, V, I and R, are linked by a simple relationship called Ohm's law V is equal to I R. Voltage is equal to current into resistance. Let us understand AC, alternating current, and DC, direct current. AC, alternating current, and DC, direct current, are two different types of electrical current used for different purposes. AC is a type of electrical current that periodically reverses direction and it is commonly used for powering homes, businesses, and industrial machinery. It is generated at power plants, transmitted over long distances through power lines, and distributed to homes and businesses for various electrical applications. DC, on the other hand, flows in one direction only and it is commonly used for powering electronic devices such as computers, mobile phones, and electric vehicles. It is also used for specialized industrial applications such as welding and electroplating, as well as for renewable energy sources such as solar panels and wind turbines. The rate at which AC current switches backwards and forwards is called frequency the number of cycles per second. Unit is hertz and symbols is hertz. The mains electricity supply in different countries around the world in terms of both voltage and frequency. For example, in India and UK, it is 230 volts, 50 hertz. In USA, it is 120 volts, 60 hertz. Let us now understand hazard and risks associated with the use of electricity at work. Electricity is a powerful and essential source of energy but it can also be dangerous if not handled properly. The hazards caused by electricity are electric shock, burns, electrical fire, electrical explosion, arc flash, arcing, static electricity, and secondary effect like fall. Let us understand each hazard. Electrical shock. Direct contact with electrical current can cause serious injury or death. Electrical shock can cause burns, muscle contractions, and even stop the heart. Burns Burns can also result from an electric shock at the point of contact and at the point that the current flows out of the body. There may also be internal burns along the current path. Fires Electrical fires can occur due to faulty wiring or improper use of electrical equipment. These fires can be particularly dangerous because they can spread quickly and are difficult to extinguish. Explosions Electrical explosions can occur when electrical equipment is not properly maintained or if there is a short circuit. These explosions can cause significant damage to property and pose a risk to people nearby. Arc flash Arc flash is an electrical explosion that occurs when an electric arc or discharge of electrical energy 
travels through the air between conductors or from a conductor to a ground. It is a sudden and violent release of energy that can cause severe injury, burns, and even death. Arcing Arcing is a hazardous phenomenon that can occur in electrical systems when an electric current jumps across a gap between two conductors. It can cause fires, explosions, and severe injury or death to people working with or near the electrical equipment. Static electricity is an electrical charge that builds up on the surface of an object due to friction or contact with another object. While static electricity can be harmless, it can also be a hazard in certain situations, such as in flammable or explosive environments, where it can cause sparks and ignite fires or explosions. Secondary Effect Example, person falling from height, dropping off tools and objects. Accidents involving electricity frequently involve two or more of these hazards at the same time. Let us now understand control measures during the use of electricity. Electrical equipment must be carefully selected to ensure that it is suitable for the electrical system, purpose and environment of use. Protection System Various protection systems can be used for electrical equipment such as fuses, earthing, isolation of supply, double insulation, residual current devices, reduced and low voltage systems. Each of these protection systems has advantages and limitations. Let us understand the various protection system. A fuse is a device used to prevent current overload. A simple fuse is made of two metal caps joined by a thin piece of fuse wire. When this fuse is incorporated into an electrical circuit current flows through the wire. If the current is too great for the fuse wire rating, the wire becomes hot and melts. This breaks the circuit. Miniature circuit breakers, MCBs, are electromechanical devices that work in a similar way to fuses to protect equipment from current overload. One significant difference is that an MCB does not melt in response to current overload. It simply trips out and can be reset by pressing a button. Earthing is a way of protecting equipment so that in the event of an electrical fault, current flows safely to earth rather than flowing through a person who might be touching the equipment. The advantage is it protects the person from fatal electric shock. Also it often provides secondary protection to the equipment because a large fault current flowing to earth will overrate the fuse or MCB. Isolation of Supply, Lockout Tagout Isolation is the removal of electrical power from a circuit or system. This might be achieved using a switch, isolator, or by pulling the plug out. This makes the system or circuit dead and safe to work on. To ensure safety, isolation should always be physically secured before people work on the dead system. This is often achieved by padlocking isolators in the off position, lockout, tag out system. Double insulation The principle behind double insulation are there are two layers of insulation between the user and any live conductors. This eliminates the need to provide earth protection, so double insulated equipment will have to co-flex, live and neutral only. Double insulation is commonly used as a means of protection for handheld portable electrical equipment such as hedge trimmers. Residual Current Device, RCD A residual current device, RCD, is a safety device used to protect against electric shock. It detects the current imbalance between live and neutral conductors in an electrical circuit and cuts off the electricity supply if necessary. RCDs are commonly used in homes, offices, and other buildings, especially in wet areas like bathrooms and kitchens. Reduced and Low Voltage Systems Reduced and Low Voltage Systems are electrical systems that operate at voltages lower than the standard line voltage used in power transmission and distribution. Security Systems, Telecommunication Systems, HVAC Control Systems, Lighting Control Systems, and Renewable Energy Systems are five examples of reduced and low voltage systems. Competent Person a competent person with respect to electrical safety is someone who has the necessary knowledge, skills, 
and experience to safely handle and work with electrical equipment and systems. They are trained to identify potential electrical hazards, assess the risks involved, and take appropriate measures to control or eliminate those risks. Entry to authorized personnel only. Transformer, LT panel room, area and electrical substations are high-risk electrical area. Only trained, licensed and authorized individuals are allowed to access electrical equipment and systems to prevent electrical hazards and ensure safety. Unauthorized personnel may face serious risks of electrocution, fires, or other dangerous incidents. Safety Sign Board Specific safety signs and warnings should be used to alert individuals of potential electrical hazards and ensure safe practices. These signs may include warnings about high voltage, shock risks, or the need for personal protective equipment. Safe system of work Safe system of work should be used when risk is created by work on or near electrical systems. This safe system of work is likely to make use of the following controls. 1. Permit to work system. 2. Isolation or lockout, tag out system. 3. Insulating PPE such as gauntlets and boots. 4. Insulated tools and equipment such as screwdrivers. 5. Designated work areas such as earth-free zones. Personal protective equipment, PPE. Use appropriate personal protective equipment, such as rubber sole shoes, gloves and safety glasses, when working with electricity. Training Training is of utmost importance as it equips workers with the necessary knowledge and skills to identify and mitigate electrical hazards, ensuring a safe working environment. Inspection and Maintenance Electrical installations and equipment should be routinely inspected to ensure electrical safety. This includes electrical equipment installed in building, larger equipment that is not moved and smaller, portable appliances. There may also be national requirements governing the inspection of the electrical installations or requirements imposed by insurance companies. User checks and formal inspection. All electrical installations, equipment and appliances should be subject to user checks, formal inspection and combined inspection and testing to ensure electrical safety. Emergency procedures following an electrical incident. If in spite of all the available control measures being in place, an electrical incident occurs in the workplace, all workers should be aware of the following method for dealing with an electric shock casualty. In conclusion, electrical safety is of utmost importance and it is essential to follow safe work practices and procedures to prevent accidents and injuries. By being aware of electrical hazards and taking necessary precautions, we can ensure a safe working environment for everyone. Stay aware, take control electrical safety is everyone's goal. Thank you for watching.